Welcome to Lure Love, where our motto is why buy one lure when you can buy 103. I'm Tim Beat, and I'm here with a crappy hippie, John King, who is the owner of Glasswater Angling, maker of lead-free fishing tackle. How are you, John? Hey, I'm doing great, Tim. John, you remember in our last episode, we had talked about how to clean old lures with WD-40, and I told you how frustrated I was trying to remove hooks and split rings from hard baits. And I always thought it was me that it was user error, but you shared with me that you used those split ring pliers made by Zuron Corporation. It's Zuron, X-U-R-O-N, and they have blue handles on them. And since you had put together thousands and thousands of lures, I thought, well, I should buy a pair of these and uh, test them out. And guess what? It wasn't user error at all. I just had a really bad pair of cheap split ring pliers that didn't work. And these Zurons were amazing. Well, I'm glad I was able to, you know, turn you on to them. Um, I'm surprised they don't do more marketing to fishers, uh, you know, but it's okay, man, because I, I did the same thing. I bought cheaper ones and, you know, you lose out in the long run because they were such a hassle to use. Price is only one factor. Um, you value, you know, that's the smart way to spend your money. I installed new split rings and hooks on about 20 lures that I had painted and I removed hooks from about 20 old lures in, in just about an hour and they were excellent. Um, the difference is the Zuron pliers have a longer tooth to separate that split ring. It creates a bigger gap than my old plier, so it's much easier to use. And you can get them on Amazon for just 16 clams. I mean, it's really very affordable. Oh, yeah. They're, they're not, you know, not a terribly expensive tool, especially when you compare them to tools you would use in other trades. Um, you know, and, and their, their design, their engineering is just superior. Um, that's the way it is. And that's a factor of value. I mean, when you work easily, you know, and more efficiently with a well-designed tool, um, you get plain, you just plain get more work done and you're happier doing it and the work comes out better. Yeah. So thanks for teaching me about those. You know, we're always curious about new techniques and products and the Facebook group it always has great discussions about those where people are saying, hey, what do you think about uh, this lure, this rod and reel, and, uh, and getting good feedback. And like most anglers, I care about the environment. I just didn't know much about lead, and I didn't think about it. I'd always used it. And as I looked at some of the research, there are millions of pounds of it used in hunting and fishing and shooting sports that wind up in the environment every year. And it doesn't really have any known biological uh, benefit to anybody it's it's um it's a detriment and in in other products like gasoline paint pesticides we've eliminated it which is a, a good thing so the work that you've done creating these non-lead jigs and lures and, and weights is really a huge step in the right direction well thank you very much tim i mean I, it really you know hit me when i you know i was completely ignorant of it until 2011 and and you know massachusetts actually passed was the first one to pass the uh, anti-lead laws uh, in as early as 1998. So a lot of people are doing a lot of catching up, and and uh, it, it, but it's a growing problem. It's not one that we want to leave laying around. And um, so um, you know we're we're trying to invent as many tackle items that end up lost in the waters. We do, of course, the jigs and the the wire baits and and the weights, and and um, we're bringing them on a little bit at a time. I've got hematite slick weights on the site now and i just ordered some uh, split shot and i can't wait till it gets here and uh hey mark peeper if you're out there listening uh you're on the list bro guy's been after me to make him some lead free catfish weights and i've got some ideas there these statistics that you come up with when you realize you know how much is going into the water uh can really start you to thinking yeah and, and as i thought more about the environment my philosophy is pretty simple if we can make lures and other tackle that are more friendly to the environment and they're effective catching fish and the price is similar to the alternatives why wouldn't we want to use them as long as it meets those three criteria and i've, I've read estimates that more than 4300 tons of lead fishing sinkers are sold every year in the united states and so if we can keep the, those 4300 tons of lead out of the water I'm all for it, um, you know, especially as we see the number of anglers increase, the amount of lead is going to increase too. Absolutely. So, you know, 4,300 tons of purchased lead means they're probably 
purchasing replacement tackle for the lead weights that they've lost. So that, you know, when you take that back to when this product started to be mass produced, we're talking 300,000 tons of lead lost by anglers uh, since the, the uh, post-World War II era. And, you know, it's not just that we're out uh, scattering it here and there. We, we go down to the lake, the river, the stream. We're concentrating this lost lead in natural places. And, um, you know, it harms animals in terms of immediate consumption uh, when the loons and the water birds eat it. And then, of course, secondary consumption when they're eaten by scavengers. It also contaminates the water over time. Um, and, you know, this isn't the only product that we need to worry about immediate consumption by animals. W when you speak about the Facebook group, we have a lot of debate on there about plastics because a lot of us, including me, love to use the plastics we love to get you know next to a surface water blow up catching a bass on a plastic worm about as fun as it gets that dangling and then you just watch your line moving and you know you got it you know you got to develop that skill to wait just long enough but not too long and all that and leaning back on that plastic worm and feeling that that weight that you've got a good hook set so i don't see us being able to take plastics away that simplistic solution where we just say hey you can't use plastics anymore that's not going to wash so we're looking for companies that are going to help us out with a better plastic, a plastic that does not end up in the water as much. Yeah. And John, I love soft plastics. They have always been, since I was a kid, they're my go-to bait, my go-to lure. Growing up, I loved the man's jelly worms. Remember those, especially grape, they smelled like grape and they were just so effective. All of their, the, the jelly worms smelled like a different type of fruit. And I caught a ton of fish on them. And, you know, Tom Mann was a, who, the, uh, the inventor of the jelly worms. He was an Alabama game warden before his company took off. He was also a professional bass angler and he fished the circuit. Then he was even inducted into the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. But I can remember the blueberry worms and the watermelon worms. And today we have things like green pumpkin color, but that's just the color. These things smelled like the fruit, which was just incredible. And the other bait I loved with growing up was the Mr. Twister curly tail grubs and the sassy shad. I fished those things every single time I went out. Oh, those were all favorites, you know, and we always joke, you know, those watermelon worms are good enough to eat and all that kind of stuff, you know, not um, Mr. Twister, you know, I was there when that came out, the sassy Chad, what a great idea to, to actually create a wide profile plastic that looks a lot like a shad with a nice quiver tail. Um, sure, I loved all those. And then, of course, I'm real fond of the baits that were invented around the Kansas City area uh, where I live and, you know, famous down on the Ozark. So I had a lot of beetle spins. I liked a lot of the um, uh, Marlin lures like the Puddle Jumper and the Ensley Reaper and stuff. But, you know, the first guy to come out with some plastics uh, was Nick Cream, and he invented the plastic worm about 70 years ago. And of course, Cream brand is still around, still an excellent brand of plastics. But, you know, he started out with vinyls, plastic, oils, pigments, and most of the baits today use a similar or the same sort of idea, polyvinyl chloride, which is PVC, to make their soft plastics. Now, you all have heard of Plastisol, and that's a suspension of polyvinyl chloride. Uh, a suspension is a fluid that contains solid particles. Anyway, this stuff works very well to create soft baits, as we all well know. Yeah, and John, similar to the way that I learned about the negative impact of lead is I've learned more about the plastisol used to make most soft plastics. I've just wondered about its potential negative impact on the environment, even though I love to fish it. And about 18 years ago, the PVC plastisols used in things like baby bottles and other products were pulled from the market because the FDA found that the products were leaching out and making people sick. So similar to lead, you, we just don't want too much of those things in our water. And remember, again, my philosophy is if we can make the lures that are friendly to the environment and effective at catching fish and at a similar price, why wouldn't we want to use them? So a few years ago, I bought some Z-Man Elastex soft baits on a whim. I just shot, saw them in a the store. I just liked the way they look. But as I learned more about them, the more I liked how they were made. Well, it's a cool story. Uh, Elastex soft baits came out about 15 years ago. Uh, 2005, the first batch of the final recipe of Elastex baits were produced by Z-Man Fishing. And at the time, they were the largest producer of silicone skirts. 
Now, they wanted to create a bait from an environmentally benign material that could outperform traditional PVC soft baits. And right there, you're talking, you know, that kind of drive, that kind of angler intuitiveness, that kind of problem identification that not only the solution is going to solve an environment problem, but make a better bait. That's what I'm all about. Absolutely. And uh, their recipe, yeah, baby, their recipe made the soft baits float without adding the beads, without the micro balloons, without, you know, these additions that can also be bad for the environment. Floating is a great characteristic for a soft bait because it sticks up from the bottom and gets the fish at fish's attention, um, which it, when I'm fishing Ned rigs, that's really what it's all about. I find that I, I hook a lot more fish when something is sticking up like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the floating bait is revolutionized bass fishing. Um, shaky heads, football heads. Uh, the Neko rig is another one. You, you've got me hunting down molds to make Neko rig weights and lead nails and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, of course, I won't make mine out of lead. I should say bismuth nails, which is what I'm going to make. Um, but, yeah, you, it doesn't float. It, you know, it can still work, but floater is, is what I go for 99% of the time. And, and Z-Man didn't just invent this. One of the reasons that um, I think they've been successful is they also do all the manufacturing themselves in South Carolina. So they not only invented the formulation, but also the manufacturing equipment. And when they first came out, they made their baits for Strike King. But in, in 2008, Z-Man became selling the Elastic Baits with their own logo under the Z-Man brand and the rest is history. Yeah, and what a great history it is developing into. Because uh, what's special about Elastic is that it's a different material from PVC Plastisol. Plastisol with its PVC resin and softening agents, it contains these toxic chemicals, right? So in fact, if you look at the package of Plastisol Baits in your tackle box, you'll probably see a cancer warning on there. Uh, but Elastec uses a non-toxic, non-reactive resin uh, combination in their baits. Um, it's made from a non-toxic food-grade pharmaceutical-grade resin. And uh, that sounds good to me, you know. And then it, what's brilliant is, yeah, they float. So they don't litter the bottom. So if you have, you know, you get that head shaking bass and he flings that worm off. Um, once you're done fishing that weed bed, you can go over and pick that worm back up and snatch it out of the environment right then absolutely and they also john they don't swell up if they're left in water the way plastisol does um and they do degrade over time though it, it it takes a while but what really kind of hit me was the selection and i first saw elastec baits in bass pro shops and cabela's but what i realized when i visited their website is that those stores only sell a very small fraction of all the different varieties so when i went to their website i was kind of blown away because they had 50 60 different types of baits swim baits worms curly tail grubs crayfish you name it and they also had about 25 colors so the selection was pretty good i mean i could match most of what i was using as plastisol baits from their products. And, uh, and John, you caught your first fish of this year on Elastic Bait. You bet, Tim, I sure did. And, and it was great. It was a day the pond opened up. It was a nice day. I got my work done. Uh, I got, you know, had a little bit of time there toward evening and I uh, went down and just caught me a couple nice fish. I got me a nice uh, chunky bass and I got a nice chunky crappie uh, fishing some really woolly uh, locust growth. Um, and then the other night I went down expecting more of the same and I got in my uh, the pond had come up some and so on. Uh, so that growth was out in some deeper water. Um, I ended up snagging up my, my Z man, uh, dude, I cut the line, put a bobber on it and set it out there so I could find it when I get the boat out later. Uh, <laughs> when I have the time is I am not losing my Z man trick shot meat dog, baby. No, not going to lose it. That's how much I'm already grown to love these baits. One of the things that I decided to do this year is I really want to test these things out because I think if, if a company is doing things that are, are good baits and they're environmentally friendly, I think we need to really put them through the, the test to make sure that they, they're effective and then start to use them um, you know, as much as we can. So this year, I plan to only fish Elastec baits when I fish soft baits, which is, as I said, is pretty often. Um, and I'm calling this the Elastec One Year Challenge. And I've created a Facebook page with posts and videos to document the, uh, the research. And we share some of those posts on the Fish Nerds um, group page as well. And so my first question was already answered. I know Elastic is better for the environment compared to the plastisol baits I was using. 
And as I said, I had a lot of plastisol beads. So my two big questions for this year are first, how effective are these at catching fish? And both of us are going to keep logs this year of all the fish we catch on Z-Man baits. Absolutely. We're going to keep logs on it. And frankly, I don't think there's going to be any problem there as far as uh, catching fish. Uh, I about peed myself with excitement when I opened that package from Z-Man and saw all the wonderful things that were in there and just super stoked to get down and get some, some fishing done. But I'm also going to do what you did, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to get me some items that I saw on their website and so on. Uh, that really just turned me on in terms of what I'm doing with my company. So I'm going to get some paddle tails that are compatible with Angle King, compatible with Crappie Dooler, uh, because what I not only want to test is how much the fish rough them up, but how much does the fisherman rough them up when I switch from that uh, chartreuse and black tail to, to my classic uh, stardust black and gold tail, how much does it damage that bait to come on and off a hook? And how many times can I do that? So my, my log is going to be a little different. It's going to be about fish. It's going to actually have some detail in it about any abuse or any sort of stress I put on the lure, you know, as I was rigging or re-rigging to catch the fish and so on. So uh, the Z-Man bait on a, a glass water angling crappie dealer, I think we're going to make a great team, baby. I think we're going to make a great team. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. And that kind of relates to my second question is how cost effective is elastic compared to traditional soft baits? Because if they're way more expensive, I know a lot of people aren't going to use them. I don't like to buy things that are, are significantly more expensive. And John, you have experienced pricing your jigs. How important is setting the price to getting people to buy fishing tackle? It's important in anything. And you'll get in any group of business geeks and um, they will talk about price point, you know, all night long and the things that, that contribute to that. But by and large, uh, the term is, you know, it has to be competitive. A price has to be competitive. Now, there's different ways to establish competitiveness in a price because having the lowest price is not necessarily the primary or best way to be competitive because you can price yourself out. Uh, if you're too low, then people think your quality isn't, isn't up to snuff. So, you know, you've got, you don't want to detract. Um, so you've got to get in a range of course. And then of course, the way you can pump up your take or make it more competitive, uh, of course, is to associate with a celebrity or have good fishing testimonial people believe. Um, uh, but another good way is to show the bait's value. Yeah, because in my mind, durability is really the key to calculating value. So most plastisol baits sell for about, you know, 450 for 16 baits in a pack. And elastic baits sell for about 450, but they only have eight baits. So each bait is about twice as expensive. So some people might look at that and say, well, th th that's really expensive. It's twi cost twice as much. But the real calculation of value is how long they last compared to their cost, not just what their price is, as you said. And I've used some plastisol soft baits that tore so easily, you were constantly replacing them. And that's just not a bargain, you know, based, based on their prices. If an elastic bait lasts twice as long as a traditional bait, then the value is the same. And they claim on their package that it's 10 times tougher. Now, I, I'm not sure exactly how they researched that and figured it out. But I did a stress test in my home to compare the plastisol bait with an elastic bait. You know, you've got to use your head and you've got to think a little more broad because the, the, the value on a bait that, that holds up and is durable is so much more. And it's so much better, you know, in terms of value overall, if we want to get into ethics and, and being good to your world and your neighbors and everything else. Yeah, absolutely, John. And so here's what I did for the stress test in Lure Love Labs, also known as my basement. So I, I took a Z-Man Ned Jig Head, and that has a welded keeper on it. And I love those welded keepers because they really keep a soft bait on the hook without tearing it. And then I have a pair of hemostats that clamp without tearing, and you can lock them. And so I attached the bait to the jig head. Then I attached the jig head to a line. And then I clamped the hemostat to the end of the bait and I attached to the hemostat a one and a half pound weight. So the bait was being stretched between the jig head and the weight. So that's a pretty tough test. And the traditional plastisol bait lasted only two seconds before tearing and breaking. They don't really stretch very much. But the Elastec bait lasted for 12 minutes and 51 seconds before breaking. That's 385 times longer than the Plastisol bait. And I, I posted the video on the Elastic Challenge Facebook page so you can see it. 
I was just dumbfounded. This thing stretched way out and just hung there. I mean, you could, it's a, it's about like a bungee cord. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was so cool. And it was a great idea for an experiment. Uh, but it, it illustrates exactly what we're talking about. And so the bottom line is if the elastic just lasts three or four times longer than plastisol baits, then elastic is significantly cheaper because it lasts so long. And um, Z-Man says the record for the greatest number of fish caught on one bait is 246, which I guess we can try to break this year, but I think that's probably an unbreakable record. And you and I will see how long they last as we fish this year. And we're going to provide updates on the future lure love segments about our progress. Yeah, I, I want, you know, that's that's a good motivation. I want to hit that 246 fish on one bait goal. I just want to catch <laughs> that many fish this summer. That would be terrific. Um, definitely, baby. All right. Yeah. So definitely, you know, I want to prove this company out either way. And uh, if it all, you know, blows up my face and, and, and they break and they're not, you know, they're just the same as anything else, I'm going to say so. But right. um, early, early indications are that uh, they're doing what they say they're doing. And I'm always excited about alternatives. Um, if they live up to their story, they're going to have a customer in me for life. Because one thing about fishers is we can be very brand loyal if you give us a reason and not only catching more fish, but being environmentally friendly while we're doing it. Um, hey, that motivates me all the way, babe, you know? Yeah, we, we really need to reward companies who are doing some of this environmental research and, and looking at new products, at least to give them the benefit of the doubt and the test. And in complete transparency, when I first contacted Z-Man to let them know about our year-long challenge, they offered to send both of us samples, which we gladly accepted. And, and uh, we both also purchased quite a few packets of Z-Man and Elastec baits on our own this year. But the idea for the test came from us. Z-Man did not approach us with this. It was something we wanted to do. You know, we're not crazy. Who's going to turn down free lures? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me either. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that segment. I know I did. I, I'm uh, Tim and I are so excited about this. Uh, uh, Z-Man is, is, a, is a company that I did not know a lot about uh, up until this time. I had tried them here and there, but, but had not really given them a fair test. No, and I'm really excited about this experiment because, um, you know, I'd seen Z-Man baits and, and I had tried them and I had, I'd screwed up and thrown them in with my other plastics and, and that kind of came out badly. Um, but now I know the skinny on how to store them. I, I got myself a special little book for them. And uh, I'm really excited to get out there and test them and let our listeners know uh, how they work because uh, we all want to share these sorts of secrets. Uh, they shouldn't be secrets. They should be shouted from the mountaintops because to anything that's going to help us catch more fish and, and help the environment uh, while doing it, we want to be part of. Everybody, this has been Lure Love with John King, the crappie hippie, co-founder of Glasswater Angling with my good buddy, Tim Beat, and saying tight lines and valentines. Peace out.